Everything is good when you win, fun when you dominate, great when you conquer and destroy, but no matter the accolades, all the success, there are still some times where you break the huddle and know you're about to get your ass kicked. Despite all of Tom Brady's accomplishments, Super Bowls, MVPs, win after win, ever since he's gotten to Tampa Bay, the Saints' defense has embarrassed him every chance they've gone. In five regular season games, he's just one and four, does have a playoff win against him, six touchdowns, 10 interceptions, 19 sacks, and just one game with more than seven yards per attempt. The Saints flat out have his number, thanks to a scheme and philosophy they've used against him every single time, which will break into three separate categories, schemed man coverage, familiarity on film, and personnel mismatches. We'll start off with our first category, schemed man coverage, and nobody has used man coverage against Tom Brady more than the Saints. They've played man more than zone in every matchup, which nobody does against the Bucks. You can't one-on-one -on -one cover Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Gronk when he was there. If you match these guys up in man, they'll torch you, but not against the Saints. They play tons of press man where they bash you at the line to throw off your timing, which is risky since if you miss, someone comes butt-ass naked open. But if you can, it's particularly good against a quarterback like Brady. His whole game is based on timing and progressing through his reads. Well, if all his reads can't get off the line, it doesn't matter how deep into his progression he's getting, he's either checking it down quick or has nowhere to throw. When any other team goes straight man coverage against Evans outside, Brady's looking to throw the bomb. But since he progresses so quickly, since Evans isn't initially open, he throws the quick flat. Evans comes wide open, but the ball is already out. Every game, the Saints have been able to match up Evans, Godwin, and whoever else one-on-one -on -one, and have thrown off Brady's timing to the point where he has nowhere to go at all. What do you do when you get heavy man coverage? You create stacks and bunches to get free releases. With two receivers stacked on top of each other, one corner has to back up so he doesn't get picked off at the line, which allows for a free release for one receiver, he can kinda hide behind the other receiver, and chaos ensues. So what do the Saints do to counter? They play cover one robber, then cover one robber, and then more cover one robber. The issue for offenses when creating these stack releases is you've kind of predetermined where the ball is gonna go, which for quarterbacks is never a good thing. Cover one robber is man coverage, but with a robber safety coming down to cut a crosser. Mike Evans is creating the pick, so Bradley Roby can't guard Godwin, but since Roby knows he has the robber help, he can just stay outside of Godwin and funnel him in. The Saints are excellent at game planning the right player for the robber to double. On nearly every third down, they'd rotate between doubling Evans, Godwin, or Gronk, whoever they thought would get the ball based on their film study. And with all their coverages, they'd use that film study to not only create tight coverage, but create pressure with just bringing four. Again showing this too high look, the Saints are now playing cover to man, keeping the robber's safety deep. But what I'm watching is how Brady motions in tight end Cameron Braid. This is to help chip the edge on the five-man pressure the Saints are showing, but notice how they have linebacker Demario Davis outside with defensive end Marcus Davenport inside. Brait can only chip the most outside guy, which is Davis. He's really there to help on Davenport, who's the bigger threat. But due to the Saints' alignment, he can only get to Davis, which creates a one-on-one -on -one for Davenport and makes Brady uncomfortable with pressure right in his incredibly old face. Being able to predict where the Bucks would add that protection help is a perfect segue into our second category, familiarity on film. The Bucks love to use play action after setting up their running game to attack defenses who start cheating up to the line. But against the Saints, their play action has stalled out, and honestly, a large part of that is the fact Tom Brady has a tell. He likes to gather as much information as possible before the snap, and also right after it. So on play action, he'll sneak a quick peek at the defense before he turns his back around, since that's really the most vital time a quarterback has to read the defense as they're starting to run towards their landmarks. But the Saints have picked up on it, and nobody's fooled on play action. Watch Davis and Pete Werner. Play action is designed to fool the linebackers into jumping towards the line into gaps so you can hit a throw in behind them. Well, neither even takes one step towards the line. 
Let's contrast that with the play right before, this is the first play of the game, where the Saints were more than ready to blow everything up. We can watch Brady not give that little peek, which helps alert the backers right at the beginning of the play exactly what's coming, and they for sure get downhill pretty damn fast, and there's even another little non-Brady tell too. Sometimes when offenses are pulling guards, the puller will be tighter to the center than he is the other guard. This is so he can get outside faster, and so the center can jump the one tech quicker to make sure there's room behind him. The problem is, Demario Davis knows this, knows where the run is going, that it's a run because of Tom, and this has led to the Bucks averaging under 3.5 per carry in three of these last five games. Back to the play action stuff, you can see how crucial it is for these linebackers to get sucked into the line, but because of Brady's tail, they never bite. This is a play that Bruce Arians loves called 989. We talk about it all the time here, where each receiver runs a go route outside, and the slot runs a middle read route, which turns into a dig or a post depending on the safety coverage. When there's just one high safety, that's when he'll convert his route into a dig so he's not running directly into Marcus Williams. But because the linebackers can just sink back at the snap, the area where Godwin's route is attacking is completely flooded with bodies. Our final category, personnel mismatches, refers to, actually, a couple of things. First off, the Saints having Marshawn Lattimore to cover Mike Evans is something not every team can say, so that's special. And at least, in the last few years, having coverage guys who play with power, like Chauncey Gardner-Johnson for Chris Godwin and Malcolm Jenkins for Gronk, plus I really love how they've used Paulson Adebo, matching this elite Bucks receiving group like the Saints do is something almost no other team can. The second thing is that there's been a lot of injuries to Tampa's weapons, which has seriously screwed with the numbers. Godwin is quite possibly the most important player to this entire offense, but he tore his ACL in their first game last year, and when that happened, the Saints just started doubling Mike Evans in different ways, and there was nobody else who could step up to make a play. Then this year's game, where Godwin was also out, the Bucks were actually moving the ball pretty well on them, but then Evans Will smith Marshawn Lattimore and got ejected, and Brady was back to having nobody to throw to, and everything fell apart. The Saints just played cover one man, one on one outside, inside, everywhere, since nobody on the Bucks could beat a man. Brady is a distributor, so it makes sense he can only excel if he's distributing to high quality talent. If his guys can't get open and can't make plays, he's not at a point in his career where he can really put subpar rosters on his back to dominate. They tried using more schemey type stuff, since they didn't have their typical horses on the outside, and I wanted to take just a quick sec to shout out Demario Davis, because I don't think he really gets the credit he deserves. The Saints were pretty much just playing one high and shading that safety towards Evans, so the Bucks called a concept everybody in the league runs to beat one high, where Evans clears out the coverage and a crosser runs in underneath him. Since Roby has to respect Scotty Miller's deep speed, he can't just come straight downhill to guard him, so this really only leaves Davis to what's called robot backwards and pick up Miller, and nobody is open. Davis doesn't catch Brady's little glance as well this time, but still, he has to fit his gap if this is a run, so he hops forward, then absolutely guns it out of there. This is a linebacker who has to be big enough to take on pulling guards and run down Scotty Miller, who's one of the fastest guys in the entire league. This is the type of personnel that can cover up holes in the defense, and Davis is just one of the many guys they have that's special. Lattimore, Cam Jordan, Marcus Williams, who's now in the Ravens. The Saints have had a lot of special guys that have consistently given the entire NFL fits, but not quite like the utter dominance they've displayed against Tom Brady. The greatest quarterback ever prepares every week knowing he's going to win, but when facing the Saints, a little bit of doubt creeps into his head. They can man up his receivers like nobody else. They know from film every little movement and tell the Bucks have, and when a receiver or two goes down, Brady knows he's in even more trouble. I know he had this week two matchup circled on his schedule, and while they won, the offense only put up 13 points. When they meet again in week 13, Tom Brady has a score to settle, and he is coming absolutely pissed off. This